here again are you spying on me why always whenever I'm trying to enjoy my life you're always here watching me I don't like it I like to watch people I like to observe them but when somebody observes me it's gonna end up painfully I'm watching you <clears throat> um Don't worry, my hand is all right. I have a headband um, or bandana. It's not a real one, of course, uh, because I like to parody some characters. This one is Solid Snake. Okay, <laughs> enough of jokes. Enough of jokes. Um, seriously, I have a little idea or talk to do right now with you. This video will be very long. Uh, maybe 20 or 30 minutes, depends how well do speed up things. I know you guys and of course me seen a lot of these videos uh, which are named with their titles like top 10 of this, top 15, top 20, top 50, whatever. Uh, the list goes on. There's a lot of such of videos like uh, top 10 music videos, top 10 films, games, list goes on. And uh, after all this time, I think it's about time for me to make almost the same video. I want to do top of something. So I have right here with me 11 PlayStation 2 games. Some of them of course can be bought uh, for Xbox original, but still. <clears throat> Most of them are exclusive for PlayStation 2, or used to be. I want to do top list of my favorite PlayStation 2 games. And uh, before I'm going to start this thing, I want uh, to tell you one important thing, guys. I don't have right now, or I think I won't have any more all my games of PlayStation 2 I used to have, because they're all destroyed right now. <laughs> Sad face. And uh, this games I collected right here, which I think are good ones. I must say, they're not the best. I know there are a lot more and better games. I know, guys, I know. There are much better games, but you still have to see my list. I'm really sorry for doing this kind of weak, maybe pathetic, or maybe actually um, quite good list. I still hope you will enjoy this video of mine and um, I hope you'll rate, subscribe, comment, whatever you like. Tell your friends about me. I need to become popular. I need some attention. <laughs> but I'm not attention whore. Don't worry guys, I'm not attention whore. I just like when some people talk about me, when they say that uh, this guy is amazing, he knows about games and films and stuff. <laughs> okay, I'm getting off the track right now. So, <clears throat> without ado, these are my top 11 PlayStation 2 games I liked really much and I enjoyed, experienced, whatever. Why top 11? Because I like to criticize critic. I meant um, to make fun of nostalgia critic. So, let's start with uh, 11 game. Number 11. Gran Turismo 4 on PlayStation 2, exclusive. By the way, it's pirate. Some of them are pirate, some of them are original. But... So, Grand Turismo 4, you know, it's a real driving simulator made by J Japanese company, I think. I kinda can't remember which one exactly. Well, just it's funny entertainment, I think. You all know this stuff. It's just a real driving simulator with different labs, different very 
quite um, garage of cars you can buy some you can drive them you can uh, a lot of you can do a lot of things the reason why it's 11th in my list because well I'm not into very much of driving games but still I must say that I had a lot of fun with this one even uh, I played it with my dad and we had tons of fun we <laughs> We were on our nerves when we tried to pass the licenses, like A, B, C, D, S, uh, different ones. Actually, I have a save file of it, and uh, we, ha we complete half of the game. <laughs> Hooray! It was fun, it was uh, really decent fun. And actually some people say that uh, Gran Turismo 4 is, is much better than Gran Turismo 5. Surprisingly. I still don't know. I didn't play that much of fifth game, but this one played a lot. It was a blast. It was a good one. Many different cars to choose. You can uh, wash cars. You can check your oil. You can moderate them. You can customize them. Whatever you like. You can do whatever you like. Of course, it's not engaging like a Need for Speed franchise, but because it should be. It's a real drive driving simulator. It's a uh, racing. Um, like grand sport championship uh, type of games it's not about uh, street racing it's about uh, real dri real driving and i must say mfs and grand Turismo can be both uh, be in my uh, 11th uh, spot in my list but i think uh, grand Turismo 4 is still better than uh, all need for speed games which were on playstation 2 Although I must say that Hot Pursuit 2 or even Carbon, most wanted games uh, were amazing back then. But still, I think Grand Turismo 4 here is the king in driving. So, if you still didn't play it, do it so. It's an amazing game. It will take a lot of time to get used to it and uh, it's really hard. But believe me, it's worth, it's worth playing it. Number 10. Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. So, what can I say? It's a decent game. It's not very good. It's not best game ever on PlayStation 2. Besides, it was, I think, it was on PlayStation 2 and original Xbox. And, um,. Yeah, it's a really a blessed one. If you remember the game like uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, The Two Towers and Return of the King on PlayStation 2, and the third and the second one was also on PC, uh, this one is the same deal. It's a hack and slash game, uh, where like God of War and other stuff, uh, where you fight droids, fight some other enemies, and actually in this one you fight the other, other Jedis, like Mace Windu, Count Dooku, J.R. Grievous himself. It's an amazing game and I really like it. Why it's on my 10th place? Because I don't think it's a enormous one. It's not that engaging. Although it came out maybe before the third movie came out. Or after, I don't remember. Battlefield 2 also came out in 2005. It has uh, movie scenes, uh, cutscenes, and some other stuff. It's really good. It's really a really nice thing from developers to put it into. To watch the film and play the game. It follows closely the third episode, but uh, <clears throat> because it's a game, and sometimes for developers it's really hard to put everything what was in the movie exactly in the game, so they change some stuff a bit. Uh, like, they changed uh, a lot of stuff actually from changing the game. Like, uh, most of, mostly it was uh, fights against uh, main characters like Count Dooku, Grievous, and the um, list goes on. Uh, they changed their deaths. They're not making in game graphics like uh, they died in the movie itself. No, they they just made a whole different uh, take on their deaths. 
It's it's a little nitpicky complaint, but still it's okay, I suppose. The council must be told about this. You cannot make this decision on your own. Stand down! I won't tell you again! He's manipulating you! Making you betray the Jedi Order! Can't you see that? The only thing I see is a Jedi trying to assassinate a politician. You're the one who's betraying the Republic. The fighting is nice. The, uh, the combo you can do in this game is really awesome. Like I said, it's uh, Lord of the Rings all over again, but um, worse. Or maybe nice. Still a tough decision here. What next? You play here as Anakin Skywalker and Obi Wan Kenobi in campaign. You swap between them all over the campaign. There are 17 missions to play, and also there is alternative ending. If Anakin didn't uh, wasn't defeated by Obi Wan, other way around. So yeah, it's a really nice thing they did, and also this game has. Um, Bonus missions, challenge missions, a versus mode against second player or CPU to fight just for fun, and a very weak uh, co op. Co op uh, mode uh, has four missions, only four missions to play. Also, with uh, live player or um, CPU. I think you already understand why this game is worse than Lord of the Rings. So I'll get moved to the next one. So if you haven't played, try it out. It's a really nice. It's a decent game. And because it's a really old and um, hard to find, maybe you could you can get it for a fair price on eBay. So Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Seed video game is a nice one. About movie. So yeah, try it out. Number 9. It's an exclusive for PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 and PSP. Because they're licensed. Socom 3 US Navy Seals. Or actually any other Socom game you can find on PlayStation. I just took the third one because I have one and uh, another one. Uh, what is about? It's about it's a squad-based game, action shooter, very tactical. It's like Rainbow Six Grandfather, just a lot better and from third-person perspective. You have a squad of four people, have a decent gear to fight terrorism all over the world. It's a blast, guys. I must tell you, I had ton of fun playing Socom series. Except for the bullshit confrontation Sokom 4 on PS3. Those were bad. Those games have nothing to do with this. Believe me. Sokom 3 just uh, perfected all the things. In, in third game you can actually now drive vehicles and uh, have much more um, attachments for your guns and uh, the list goes on. You can command your squadmates to do some different stuff like observing the area, clearing the area and um, covering you in any order you want. So squad of four players it's really nice. And the story is not that engaging but uh, it's a action shooter there's nothing about. It's just uh, very polished, very nice and uh, yeah you can enjoy it very, really well. The most important thing about uh, Socom Tree and the uh, next one, Combined Assault, is that it has this feature, you can connect your PSP to your PS2 using USB. 
uh, wire and you can send each other files which can alter the mission gameplay it's a really nice touch I never knew about it until I tried it B besides I got first the PSP game then I got the uh, second tree and when I tried boy it was a blast man I can change or alter my mission just by completing some special special objectives in each mission and that's a really nice thing never ever happened before well except for Assassin's Creed 2 when you uh, connected to Assassin's Creed Bloodlines the only game that happened but here we have two games so if you never played Sakam try it out but don't play Sakam 4 or Confrontation they're not good enough so the night plays for my my list Sakam 3 US Nations or any other Sakam game try it out it's a blast Number 8. I'm going to help for this. And I know you're going to hate me for this, but still. God of War and God of War 2. But I have first one. Oh, it's really a hard choice here. Actually, I must tell you the truth that I didn't enjoy God of War when I first get it, because I didn't understand it. I thought it was slow and really bad game back then. Well, I can say that back then I was a noob gamer. I wasn't that clever right now, like uh, I am right now. But now, after all that happened, this franchise got bigger and bigger. It got right now six games, I think. Original trilogy, Ascension, and two PSP titles. Yeah, it's six games. And you know what? It's actually nice. And I must say that God of War 1 and 2 on PS2 were very awesome games. I just didn't understand back then. It's about Greek mythology stuff. Tell my crime, it's Greek mythology. <laughs> it's a blast to play. There are a lot of gore, there are a lot of blood, there are a lot of beating up, smashing up. Kratos is awesome character. You're gonna have so fun playing this game having um, different combos to use and uh, magic to use against your enemies it's a nice thing to have and not in perfections as boss fights and fatalities that Kratos does to his enemies away from the ship. I will they die it's the giant one he keeps healing the others <laughs> no I God we'll never get out of here don't we're doomed we're Guts are flying in different directions, blood spills all over the place. Yeah. This is the most outstanding game I have ever seen in my life on PlayStation 2. Although I didn't understand, but I quite liked uh, God of War 2 back then. I understood it and I actually, wow, this is really amazing. Yeah, that's it. I know it deserves a better spot, but still I think 8 spot is, isn't that bad. Come on, I have several more games to play. So, let's go to the next one. And I already pointed out. Lord of the Rings The Return of the King is the second game. The first one was The Two Towers. Now you see why I took it here. Seventh place while Star Wars Episode 3 was on the tent. Because it's so much better. And Two, the, the both games were actually good. They are both great. They weren't. They weren't good. They are great. J the second game just perfected all, every stuff. Hold on. 
I can't say anything correct there, you know, so, as you can see. Um, I like how they change uh, from movie scenes to, to game graphics, it's a really nice thing they did here. And uh, the gameplay is a blast, and you can play in this game as Aragorn, Legolas, Gimli, Gandalf, Frodo, Sam and other characters, if you unlock them after beating the game, so it's a blast. Uh, upgrade your character um, with experience points and you can unlock different combos very amazing thing I think it actually was the first uh, hack and slash game I may be wrong but uh, I still think it's a good one it's uh, put the beginning to action so I can say that it's a great game it follows close with the third movie itself and shows all the major battles that happened and uh, yeah it's uh, really great especially it has a very good co-op you can play two players in this one and um, of course it's a bit limited uh, you have to play some special missions no I mean you have to play it uh, a special branch before you can do other ones it's a bit nitpicky, but still it's a nice one. They're not much of complaining about it, so yeah, it's a great one. So that's why I gave it uh, seven plays. Although the previous game also was a great one. It was great as this one just didn't have co-op. That's about it. There's not much difference. So there's no further ado. Let's go to the next one. Number 6. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. And I must say before I said that I think it's one of the best games about Mortal Kombat ever created. Why? Because it's uh, not just fighting, it's an uh, action adventure. And uh, I must say it, it is a great game. It also has co-op for two players on one screen. And it was for PS2 and Xbox, if I remember correctly. You play here as Kon Lao and Liu Kang. Also, you can use some cheat codes or just beat the game to unlock Sub Zero and Scorpion. So, in total, four characters to play campaign, and also you can unlock verse mode and some other unlockables. The game was made by Midway which used to be now it's Netherrealm, if I remember right. And yes, it's a great game to play. It has a good story, it has a lot of um, fatalities, lots of boss fights. It's a long one, so yeah, I think you can have a blast. And if you play on hard difficulty, it will make some challenges very hard. Yes, talking about challenges, you can have uh, test your mind, test your strength, and etc. But mostly it's all about doing some different ridiculous combos and using special attacks on your enemies. And you also can upgrade them. You can uh, you collect experience by beating your enemies as much as you do your combo counter. If you do it real high, you'll get so much experience and you can you can spend your points on different combos upgrades or upgrade your special attacks to make them all more devastating ultimate. So yeah, it's a great addition. All full characters can be upgraded. Although I must say that Sub Zero and Scorpion doesn't have that much fatalities like on Lao and Liu Kang. I can live with that. Although I kind of upset by this, but still, it's a great game to play, and I really enjoy it. Number five. Before I must uh, go, with, I must say, Kajima is a god. I just said Kajima is the greatest guy I have ever seen in my life. Not a real person, but still. Metal Gear Solid Three: Snake Eater. It's a third game in Metal Gear's series. Uh, if you don't count uh, eight bit games, which were on Nintendo and stuff. And why I take uh, the third game instead of uh, Metal Gear Solid 2? Well, I think because 
this one is more emotional more with uh, depth to story and uh, it's just amazing it has a lot of stuff you it's actually it's actually a beginning of the story of Metal Gear it's a very beginning how it all began how Naked Snake become big boss and later made Outer Haven and later Solid Snake tried to stop him and uh, the story goes on so the reason why I take this one instead of Metal Gear Solid although that one also good because it's the beginning it's the beginning of the series and it also was upgraded with um, different moves and stuff it has lots of weapons it has uh, uh, this uh, close quarter combat CQC you call it in this game to fight of enemies in front of you so it's really nice the characters are amazing the music is fucking brilliant the nature you're you're actually in the jungle you're walking in the jungle there and it's a really amazing game I just fell in love with it that's why I give it this um, fifth place I know it's a bad one but still that must be true Major! Leave it! Shoot the other one! Whoa! Oh. <sighs> 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 bullet by hand didn't you I see what you were trying to do but testing a technique you've only heard about in the middle of battle wasn't very smart you were asking to have your gun jam on you huh? besides I don't think you're cut out for an automatic in the first place you tend to twist your elbow to absorb the recoil that's more of a revolver technique you filthy American dog <laughs> 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 But that was some fancy shooting. You're pretty good. Pretty good. <sighs> Here I actually was a bit devastated by the choice. As I said, my list is not the best one, but still, let's go on. Number four, Shadow, Shadow of the Colossus. It's awesome. It's awesome. Although Team Ico made first game Ico and then Shadow of the Colossus Although some people speculate that Shadow of the Colossus is prequel to Icon, well, whatever. In this game, you play as a guy who tries to save his girlfriend from curse or something, and then he is being told by a deity, some dead deity, and it says that it will resurrect his girlfriend if he kills, I think, 18 Colossi or 16. I can't remember already. Been too long. I played, but still. That's the main plot, that's the main plot. There's no much plot of the game, just uh, he uh, travels across the whole map you have uh, killing this 11 Colossi and that's about it. After he kills the Colossi he uh, expands his life bar and his stamina 
circle, purple circle, I don't know why they did it purple or pink. But still, uh, the game is amazing but because it has um, great scenery, a great uh, landscapes, it has a very decent, uh, amazing soundtrack. It's uh, breathtaking. And the Colossids themselves are enormous, they're great, they're big ones. Some of them are small, like uh, this, uh, the height of uh, the main hero. But uh, others are like uh, very tall, about three floor. So, don't know how to say it. Uh, yes, that's about it. About 18 enemies in this game you encounter. You don't fight anyone else except for this Kalasi. That's about it. And it's amazing because you have to climb on them on their different spots and uh, use your sword to stab them in their uh, weak spots to kill them quickly. difficulty you have to hit there many different other spots so it's not just one it will be two or three or maybe even four so it makes things harder so yes that's about it the game is amazing it's a piece to exclusive and it was a blast back then by the way I'm talking about God of War this and uh, Metal Gear you can actually download them or buy for PS3 HD classics collection so if you can do it for PlayStation 2, then just buy it for PlayStation 3. Same deal, just a better graphics, improved one, and higher resolution. And trophy system, so yeah. Go get it. Number 3. I must say that this game is the only one good about um, movie. Spider-Man 2. Which is made after... Spider-Man 2, the movie which was uh, released back in 2004. It's a great game, it's the best Spider-Man game ever made, made by Treyarch and published by Activision, surprisingly enough. This one is a great one. I remember back then when I made a review for Amazing Spider-Man, which was released like a year ago, I thought that it will be like uh, this one, but nope, it wasn't that good like this one. It has lots of possibilities, it has a lot of opportunities, it has a um, big open world, it has this one, Island Manhattan, it has a great soundtrack by Danny Elfman, if I am correct here, it has um, voice actors from the movie, well, Amazing Spider also had the same thing, and um, it's a big world, you can uh, upgrade uh, Spidey in different ways, also, it's kind of strange that he has to go to a shop on the street to buy the upgrades instead of just pushing select button or start button and just go to upgrades. Strange, but still. Yes, you earn experiences and buy new upgrades to make uh, Spider-Man much better, agile and stuff. And it also has some different boss fights like Mysterio, Shocker and of course Dr. Octopus. 
So yes, I think it's one of the greatest games about Spider-Man ever made, especially after the movie. So yeah, go figure. Buy it, play it. It's a great one. Number two. Freedom Fighters. From the creators of Hitman. And published by EA Games. And boy, it's a blast. It's actually one of the greatest game ever made, and um, yeah, kind of strange that after this one they go, they went uh, doing Kane and Lynch. I'm not saying it was bad, but it wasn't necessary or it wasn't that good enough. <coughs> Better to play this one. Also, I must say that uh, Control on uh, PlayStation 2 is kind of not great or stiff, really hard to shoot there and do other stuff. But still. Uh, the soundtrack by Jasper Keat is amazing and the whole story is great. It's an alternative reality of Cold War. What would happen if uh, Russians won and America was in chaos? So you're playing there as a patriot of your country and trying to save it from Reds. So that's about it. Just different locations, killing Reds, using different uh, weapons and just uh, raising your American flag on on flag poles uh, in different locations, so that's about it. It has a, a death match, also multiplayer game, but that's not interesting enough. So, yeah, game only good because it has a very nice gameplay and uh, amazing soundtrack. That's all I can say. It's one of the greatest game ever made. So if you haven't played Freedom Fighters, go try it on Xbox Original, PlayStation 2, or don't adjust it for, for free on PC. Same deal, same game. It's a total kick ass. It is you, like a Jonas. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> 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 
favorite PlayStation 2 game, from my experience, Black. <laughs> by Criterion Games and published by EA Games. Also it was on the Xbox original. It's a shooter, first person shooter, and uh, I must say that it's a great game, it's a really nice one, it has a very... I don't know... The reason why I put it on the first place because I was uh, really amazed by it because it's like... Uh, the main cast of the game was guns! Were guns! One five one. This is Hammerhead six two. Top advises streets barricaded to the north. We are circling around you to find an alternate route. Over. Oh! <laughs> 
say again, you'll ask me for my time. This is 2-5, I say again. We're pinned down, we're pinned down. I have multiple casualties. Request priority medevac on my location. Copy that. You that down me in two or five minutes. can see that it's actually what uh, Black Ops Call of Duty tried to be, but this one is much better. The graphics for PlayStation 2 and Xbox are really nice back then, for its time. So yeah, it's a great game, it's, an, it's a very decent shooter. And the music is alright. I don't know what to say about it, it's just a good, it's a really nice shooter. Destructive environment, the explosions are nice, Dolby surround, they're playing. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. I know, there's not much to say to it, so yeah. Maybe it shouldn't be on the first place, but for me it was like this. As I said already, I don't have that uh, enough games like I used to. I could have put here Indiana Jones and... Uh, uh, Tomb of Dragon Emperor, I think, or same one like Dynasty Warriors games. Yes, they're all good. Even uh, James Bond games, everything or nothing, were great back then. But because I don't have them on my hands right now, so yeah, I have to put these ones. As I said, it's not a decent list, but in my opinion, in my opinion, that's what makes me like PlayStation 2 and what makes me feel better and happy because I played such amazing games back then still not a great list but not bad either it has some decent games some not one good ones but still 
So, I hope you enjoyed my list of top 11 games on PlayStation 2. Next one will be top 11 maybe or top 10 games on Nintendo I liked very much. So, thanks for watching guys, I'll see you later.